Hey everybody, it is late at night and I am Norman. It is the middle of September at the time of this filming, so what time is it? It's time for some more news, so let us begin. The first article that I'm discussing tonight comes from Watchtime.com, and this is about the Hamilton PSR Green LED Watch. Strange, there have been a lot of Hamiltons on my radar recently. I actually own three Hamiltons at the moment, and all three of them are square-shaped dress watches. Crazy. Well, the PSR is a Hamilton watch, it's an LED watch. I personally own a Lytronics watch, which is an old LED watch where you have to push a button to display the time. And like most LED watches, the time is displayed in a red color. However, the PSR that we're discussing tonight glows with a green color, which is pretty cool. So what do I think of this watch? First off, I like it a lot. It's really cool looking and I love the idea of the green LED. I would love to see that in person. My main gripe with this watch is the price. These retail for over $700 for an LED watch. And I don't know how the newer versions of these watches perform, but the vintage ones are absolutely horrible. At least my Lytronics. I put two batteries in this thing and it will burn through those batteries in one month of very light use. So it's not like I'm pushing the button to display the time a ton. Just a little bit. I would wear it here and there, not every day by any stretch, and it'll burn through that battery in a month. So it rarely has a battery in it. Of course, the case also does need some cleaning. It's really tough to set the time on it because I think one of the pushers is kind of gunked up. But even if that weren't the case, in spite of how cheap batteries are, it's still a huge pain to be changing out batteries every month. So I'm hoping these newer ones perform much better than that. If they do, that is not a gripe against this watch, and it's only the price. I feel like 700 bucks is pretty steep. I think maybe three, four at most for a watch like this, but seven is quite a bit. If they ever bring the price down or I find a killer deal on them, I would love to see one of these PSRs in green in person. But until then, I guess I'll just look at pictures. The next article I'm discussing is the Aventi Sapphite. And this came from Escapement Magazine. So Aventi has been making sapphire cased crystals at an affordable price for quite a while. And when you're talking about sapphire cased crystals, I mean, a lot of these are in like the $100,000 range or somewhere up around there. They're a lot of money. The Aventis, I believe, go for about 20,000 bucks usually. This particular piece is not truly sapphire, it's some weird, as they call it, sapphite. And it's a blue color crystal, which is pretty crazy. So what do I think of this watch? For those of you who are old enough to remember, Crystar. When I was a kid, Crystar was so cool. These were action figures of a Conan-like warrior, and the plastic was clear and shaped to look like crystal. So he was a crystal warrior, he was bald, but he did come with a crystal helmet that you could put on him, and it had kind of Viking-ish wings or whatever on it. If you look him up today, he has not aged well at all. But when I was a kid, these toys were absolutely amazing. I got my toys for Christmas, and I remember waking up super early and playing with those toys for hours. These watches kind of remind me of that because of that blue hue to them, which makes the watches super fun. But I've been trying ever since I encountered them to like Aventi watches, but uh, they're really just kind of clunky and blocky and weird looking to me. I just don't care for them at all. But I do love the blue, and it will be interesting to see if other brands do kind of similar things. I mean, I'm a sucker for clear stuff. That's why I have a shelf full of swatches, and most of those are transparent. So it'd be kind of cool 
to see some other brands play with materials kind of like this. Maybe their designs will be a little bit more elegant looking, but kudos to Aventi for being creative and coming up with some fun, transparent pieces. The next article that I encountered was a piece on Watch You Seek, where the writer was talking about his Apple Watch and how he used to wear regular watches, but ever since he's gotten his Apple Watch, that's pretty much all he wears. And when he's not wearing it, he feels cut off from the world because he does his notifications through his watch and is able to respond to things right away. Having his phone muted and whatnot, if he doesn't have his watch on, he misses stuff. What do I think about this article? I have a couple smartwatches. They're older, one of them is a Fitbit. And when I got that one, I was at the height of my sci-fi collecting trip. And so this watch was fun. I was able to design some watch faces for it. And I made like a Unix console watch face that looked just like a terminal and kind of told time in an animated way, like you were running a process in a terminal or something. I also made a binary watch face that was just a grid of squares. And that was super sci-fi looking straight out of a movie. But even back then, I didn't really wear it a ton. And for me personally, smartwatches just don't do it at all. I love regular watches. I love vintage watches. Yeah. And I feel like if you're so attached to your technology that not even your phone that's always in your pocket is enough for you, that might be a problem. Now, I understand this person is using this watch in a professional capacity, but still... I feel like that's a little bit too much dependency on technology. I feel like phones is pushing it a bit. But maybe that's just me. The next story that I have is a review of a jacket draws. Jack A draws? Pretty sure it's pronounced jacket draws. I think that's how I've heard it pronounced. But a review of one of their watches that came through on Deployant.com. This watch is an automaton watch. So pieces of the dial move. As time goes on, this is a dragon watch, and the particular one that I was looking at had a black dial with a gold dragon on it. And what do I think about this watch? Automaton watches are always intriguing. It's really interesting to see what people do mechanically animating things on something as small as a watch. And surprisingly, as gaudy and crazy as this watch is, I actually really love the look of this watch. I feel like their execution of the dragon and the black and gold color scheme really makes this watch look interesting. I believe it's a larger watch. It's certainly nothing that I would own, but it looks absolutely amazing. And the animations on it are really cool. The scales move up and down, the tail moves a bit. Uh, it's really cool looking. So for those of you who love the really high-end watches, I feel like this one would be an intriguing watch and something that might be of interest to you. If nothing else, they're really cool to look at. And in the link that I have in the description below, you'll see a video so you can see the automaton in action. It's surprisingly cool looking. Weird. The next bit of news I have comes from watchtime.com and this was a review of brightly colored brightlings. And that's something that we've been seeing a bit of recently, a lot of really bright colored watches. What do I think of that? Well, those of you who know me or have seen one or two of my videos, you'll realize that I'm very, very tame in my tastes of watches. Pretty much everything I own is either a black dial or a silver dial. I have a couple white dials, but even that's a bit too much for me. However, I think it's really cool to see brands having fun with colors. And certainly during the summertime, some of these watches would be absolutely brilliant. Now, as time has gone on, I've sort of opened up to colors a little bit. I'm really intrigued by red dial watches, and at some point, I will definitely be owning one. And even more recently, after seeing some wrist shots of a brown dialed watch, those are intriguing as well. Those wrist shots in the article that I had encountered looked absolutely brilliant. Who would have ever thought that I would like a brown dial watch? I am not a fan of brown at all. This hat is about as brown as I would get. Although I do have some espresso colored straps, 
but they're pretty dark and rich. But they are brown. So yeah, I'm super stoked that brands like Tag are playing with bright colored watches. That's pretty cool. It would be fun to see some of these in the wild. I haven't encountered them yet. The last little piece of news that I'm discussing tonight comes from Worn and Wound, and this was an article on why the author loves Loom. This article also harkened back to my childhood because I too loved Loom. I remember I had a whole bunch of glow-in-the-dark jelly bracelets, and I loved those. And just like the author, I too had glow-in-the-dark stars, the little dots that you adhere to your ceiling, and unlike the more recent iterations of those, which are star-shaped. When I was a kid, they were dots, so it actually looked like you were peering up at the night sky while you're laying in bed in your room. So I, too, have also always loved glow-in-the-dark things. However, with watches, I'm not so hung up on Loom really at all. But I do agree with this author. When you own a watch that has really, really intense Loom, it is pretty cool because you'll notice it like the author mentions, throughout the day. You'll go into a room that's dimmer than the one that you were in and your watch is glowing super bright. And when I owned my Marathon GSAR, those tritium tubes were pretty cool. They were brand new, so they glowed fairly brightly. I could hold it up near a wall and it would illuminate that wall. Not quite as bright as Super Luminova, but they glowed all night long, so. But I do agree. Intense Loom is pretty fun to look at, but for me personally, Loom is not a make or break thing. Even on dive watches and whatnot, to be perfectly honest, Loom really doesn't last that long, even really good Loom. I mean, it may be technically glowing after a half an hour or something, but I'm not sure how you would be able to really read the time, at least in my experience. Like when I wear watches like my CWC camping and stuff, it's pretty much useless at night because I've been sitting in the dark for long enough that the loom is dead and it might as well just not even be there. I usually have to tell the time by the firelight even though my watch has loom. So for me, I could take it or leave it, but it is pretty cool to look down and see your watch glowing super bright. So yeah, that has been the news for mid-September 2022. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.